Wondering what the future of Rise of Kingdoms holds? As it turns out, they've been posting the future of the game into their own Discord server, and yeah, we're gonna talk about some of these changes because they are freaking amazing. Hello my friends and welcome back. Today we're gonna be cruising through Discord where in the dev feedback channel of the Rise of Kingdoms Discord, they talk about the future of the game and it's freaking amazing. We're gonna talk all about the comments that have been posted here by Cheesecake, who's one of the community managers that works at Lilith. And yeah, uh, you're gonna wanna hear all of this because it is phenomenal. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. And we are a sponsored content creator and man, I did not know that they post literally all the good stuff right here in the official Rise of Kingdoms Discord server. And we're gonna review all of it because there is a lot to talk about here. So these are things that are under consideration. It doesn't mean they're gonna happen, but this is the official Lilith response to things that players have requested or asked about. So the first ask, and I love this, there are a lot of redundant items like arrows, books of the covenant, stars, etc., which can never be used. Give any great way to utilize these items or exchange them. And the response is, thank you for the suggestion. We're currently considering implementing a way to exchange redundant items. Now, this is amazing. There are tons of games that do stuff like this. I played Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes in the past. You had a bunch of extra shards of a commander. You could trade it in for universal currency that was used for other stuff. A lot of games do things like that, and it would be very logical for Rise of Kingdoms to go in that direction. Um, this could be through a special item shop. Boom, Cheesecake hits the nail on the head. Where governors can exchange or uh, recycle certain items. This might include Ithelfled sculptures. Yo, that's amazing. Stay tuned for future updates. So... Cheesecake really slays this one. Now, like, that was like a softball and he hit it out of the park. Let's see if the next one's a tougher question. More items and free legendary commanders like Ethelfled in a mission. Great news. This is, my mind was blown. Great news. We are planning on releasing more free legendary commanders and also epic commander in the near future. This was posted 7-5, okay? Less than a week ago from the time of this. Okay, like 10 days ago, whatever. Less than a month ago, this was posted in the near future. Make sure you don't miss out on those. Sick, dude. Sick, it's happening. All the things we want are happening. Let's go on. Rework Light versus Darkness KVK. This is the most boring event in the game and it's supposed to be best. We had roughly five hours of fighting in our KVK because the enemy ignored our ruins and Kingsland was over very fast. So true. Our KVK Kingsland fight was over in like eight hours and we did later try to go and contest it. Uh, using a strategy where we basically had our main alliances kind of cut up the right side of the map and the whole left side of the map couldn't get reinforcements from the enemy because they had to literally destroy their own allies' flags to come and help out, which actually is what happened. But um, yeah, I agree that I'd like to see more action. Um, and the feedback about the latest KVK as well heard, we'll make changes to KVK soon and make sure the excitement of KVK stays there. Beautiful, baby. Beautiful. So Lil as knows KVK needs some love and they're going to work on that. That's what I want to hear. Um, it's definitely <laughs> eight hours of Kingsland. I mean, we battled for like six days in the last KVK we did. All right. So anyways, season three was insane. Um, I've got a playlist. If you want to see my season three, where we battled for like six days straight against five alliances at the same time with like our kingdom and one ally, it was nuts uh, until our other ally could arrive. And card up in the top. It was crazy. Make much cheaper passport credits. Either add another way of getting them. It doesn't take a year or just do something like after every KVK, you have the option to migrate for free. So um, I like this suggestion that like, hey, look, for a lot of people, migration is really expensive. Um, there's there's a balance here that has to be made between people migrating all the time, upsetting the balance of communities and kingdoms and ruining the spirit of actually needing to collaborate in any way and um, giving people the freedom to leave at a cost that's affordable. Because look, when you hit a certain power, it's astonishingly expensive to go anywhere. And even my restart project is under 40 million power and that was 12 passports and that was a lot. I mean, like your best bet for getting passports is the Alliance shop at 600,000 Alliance currency or the $5 and $10 bundles are like the cheapest way you can get passports. 
but that's still a lot of money to take your account to another kingdom. So that's the balance they're struggling with. After receiving suggestions from the community, we've already reduced the cost of migration passports in update 10.28. This is true. I think there were 2 million currency before. Am I remembering that correctly? And therefore, we do not plan on further reducing the cost anytime soon. However, we will continue to observe whether, okay, so they're not saying no, but they're kind of saying we already did it. So I generally think it's important for people to be able to play with communities that they want to play with. So I'm fully supportive of ways for players to actually play with the people they want to play with. Fully supportive. Buff silver keys, please. Oh my gosh. You know how I'm saving silver keys? Hold on, hold on. Let me show you. I have 12,026 keys I have been saving in case they add something to a silver key, okay? I have been waiting for this moment, the answer to this question, for over a year because I was like, F it, these silver keys don't have anything I need, really. Like, I'll wait. I'll wait and maybe they add something. They add stuff to gold keys. They add legendary commanders. What if they put something in a silver key that's good? I'd feel really dumb opening all my silver keys and then like, boom, they add all this good stuff to a silver key. Oh, and let's just open this chest. I'll show you why. Like, why do I need to open these? I don't need any of this. <laughs> okay, let's go back. We don't plan on adding changes to the silver keys and their drop rate anytime soon. However, we're considering adding a special chest similar to the silver key with certain equipment drops in the tavern in the future. Is that equipment patterns? materials. I think this is patterns. I think they're adding some key where you can get a pattern from the tavern. Gosh darn you. I think that's what's coming. I think that's coming to the game, people. I expect this is what's coming to the game. But there's more. You thought this was all? No. Mm -mm. There's more. What else do we have? Please optimize the Silk Road event. When there are many Alliance members participating in the event, we experience lag. Also, please improve the reward quality. It'd be great if it drops equipment material and blueprints of equipment. Do not drop it as a dumb box. This is my favorite. This is my favorite phrasing of a question ever. Do not drop it as a dumb box. Send it straight to the governor's mail. No one likes to play a 10 to 30 minute event and only one or two people get good stuff due to being lucky. Praise be to the person who asked this question, you genius. You genius with your wording. This is a marvelous. I love the wording of this question. No dumb box drops. I mean like, oh my God, it's the most frustrating thing on the face of the earth to randomize loot that way, right? Like at least when you do Karak ceremony and you don't like what you get, you get what you get or not, but it's in your mail, you know? We've been observing the Silk Road event for quite a while now. We agree that this event needs further optimizing in terms of rewards and ensuring a stable, lag-free playing experience. Awesome. Love that. Love that. Um, I They're going to change the rewards. They're going to make it stable. Right now, what you have to do in this event is get to 2,000 individual contribution points. The way that you get to 2,000 individual contribution points in the Silk Road, this is the one where you're escorting the caravan, is you have to battle the things that are gonna hit the caravan and get enough contribution score. But to check your contribution score, you have to go back to the screen with the event and look at your score ranking. And once you get over 2000, you have to actually stop participating to let your other Alliance members get enough scores so that they can get the max rewards too. If you do that on the hardest difficulty, you can get two legendary commander sculptures every time you do it. So that's six legendary commander sculptures every time this event comes around, which is like 12,000 gems worth of sculptures if you buy them from VIP, which is pretty freaking sweet. So I like the quality of the rewards, quite frankly, but I 3,000% agree that they should make it so that there is not this fighting desire to participate and not participate. You should always fully participate in events and that should be rewarded. Okay, enough about that. Transfer leadership to someone else. It should become R4, not R1. Okay, so this is quality of life. And if you are the leader of Alliance, you give it to somebody else, you become an R1 instead of an R4. Cool suggestion, but I don't know. I can think of a lot more things that I'd prioritize higher. Allow alliances from the same kingdom that are connected to a pass to be able to go through uh, it automatically and capture it if it's empty. Oh my gosh. For the love of all the Tolly, it is so frustrating to share a pass with other alliances or kingdoms because like eventually somebody is ridiculous and they put their troops in it to garrison it and then you can't get through and you have to take the pass to get your troops through from another alliance or another kingdom. But then somebody's garrisoning it and so your troops are fighting and then they're dying and it's so dumb and frustrating. There is nothing 
fun about pass sharing. Zero fun about pass sharing. The only thing that like is true of it is we were so good at it in our KVK that it became an advantage, but like it should not, it's not fun. So make it fun. Um, and I completely agree. As this feature might be technically challenging, it might take some time to implement. It is definitely on our radar. Boom. So they might do it, they might not, but at least they're thinking about it. Gosh, bless you, cheesecake. Add more civilizations. Who doesn't want more civilizations? I do, you do, we all do. Adding more civilizations is another frequent request made by players. Rest assured that new civilizations are definitely planned to be added to the game in the future. New civs coming, baby. New civs. What else do we got? Revamp old commanders and make them more viable. Okay. Hannibal Barca sucks. Charlemagne sucks. There's no way around it. These commanders are not very good. Hannibal Barca is a VIP 15 commander. And I'm not saying make him god tier. I'm just saying he's only good in the early game. And isn't it remarkable that a commander that you're like getting for VIP sucks? Feels weird. Like, every commander that's legendary should feel legendary. Charlemagne is the KVK Season 1 reward. Like, people get him and then don't use him. Like, KVK 1 doesn't matter. Charlemagne doesn't matter, except in the future, they're saying it might. Revamping commanders is something that needs careful discussion as it affects the balance of the game. As of now, we are actually considering looking into Hannibal Barca and Charlemagne for potential changes. So, that's some pretty lightweight, non-committal wording. Like we're considering looking at Hannibal Barca for potential changes. But if I channel my inner Jim Carrey, so you're saying there's a chance. Look, either developers are saying it's on their radar. They recognize and acknowledge that maybe that's a thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's what I want to hear. Allow us to get past city skins. This is a great one. There are so many city skins that are either legendary or epic that people want and they can't get. It is a no-brainer for the developers to create a way to get the old city skins because then they don't have to keep making new ones. It's less development effort. Players want it. It's a win-freaking-win. Go spend your development cycles fixing these commanders or adding civilizations or even transferring leadership <laughs> instead of giving us more skins when we want a lot of the old ones. I'm good with that. I am good with that prioritization. Next up, give us a monthly or yearly login reward system where you progressively get better rewards, such as a migration pass. Being a long, this is a great answer, or at least the question I love, let's see the answer. Being a longtime governor is definitely a milestone we want to celebrate. We will look into making a reward system and the reward details to reward our loyal players. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, I'm going to really date myself for a moment. I used to play a game, Ultima Online. Um, literally, I was at summer camp. This is a true story. I was at summer camp. Okay. And I wrote a letter home to my parents. Okay. And in this letter, I was like, camp is good. I love you. Send more information about the release of Ultima Online. That was when I was in middle school or whatever. Like that's what I was doing. Okay. Like send, please send more info about Ultima Online. This letter, I really wrote this letter. I actually did this. Okay. And in Ultima Online, I, I knew there was a tie-in. I, I got distracted. In Ultima Online, there was a system where for every, like, year that you were a member, um, you got, like, progressively better rewards for having stuck around. And I remember there was, like, some invisible ostrich that you could ride or whatever. And it was a really good mount. And, like, it couldn't be stolen from you and all this other stuff. And it was bound to your account. Was, dude, the reward system was magnificent. So I think they definitely could do stuff. They definitely could do stuff where... Based on how long you've been a governor, you get some rewards that are actually like meaningful and cosmetic in nature. This, I think, is the key. I think these rewards should primarily be cosmetic in nature so that you don't get a big combat advantage over other players. Like VIP is your long term being a player reward for like combat advantage potentially, right? So I think a system other than VIP. That is rewarding time not spent will be really cool. I think that would be really cool. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. And even if it is a combat advantage, I actually would be sort of okay with that. Although it creates sort of a weird implication that like we all should go create like half a dozen different governor profiles that just get old and sit around and don't do anything. Because I totally remember quitting Ultima Online and coming back and it was like, you've been an Ultima Online member for 10 years. And I was like, nope. 
Definitely not, but I'll take the rewards. Thank you very much. And like, it was a 10 year old account technically that got closed and reopened. I don't remember the exact details, but there's a possibility that that's how this works too. And like, that's not the worst, but it should be like active playtime. Just wouldn't hate if it rewarded all playtime. Anyways, if you want to see the latest and greatest stuff from Dev Feedback, you of course can join the official Rise of Kingdoms uh, Discord server, or you can subscribe to the channel where we release daily Rise of Kingdoms videos, and I now will be monitoring this like a freaking hawk. I'm going to monitor this like a hawk and put out new videos anytime something gets posted here. The last time that something compelling got posted was actually all the way back, let's see here, they posted, I mean like, they posted in November, and in January, and in April. I mean, like, they have been posting here, and how have I not been looking at this? How have, how have we not been talking about what's in here? This is the sort of communication I feel like we've been wanting, and maybe people are going to like, Chiskel, obviously, this is all, like, we've known about this forever, but why was it for, like, the first time today in a live stream? Someone was like, Chiskel, did you know about this? And I was like, what? No. I can't tell you how many times I've talked about Hannibal Barca and Charlemagne. I'm like, boom, <laughs> it's in here in the notes, baby. So if you enjoyed the video, throw a like onto here. Subscribe so that you can get more updates just like this. If you're looking for more stuff to watch, we've done some videos recently about Ethelflaed that I think were very compelling. 12 crazy hacks for Rise of Kingdoms. They're really more like tips, but like... Come on, there's like life hacks, growth hacks, now Rise of Kingdoms hacks for making your account really, really good. That's a video you might want to check out as well. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.